Today's episode of the Bill Simmons Podcast brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor, the easiest way to shop for the best tickets, thanks to their revolutionary grading system. Chris Ryan, have you bought Dodger tickets on SeatGeek yet? I have. My listeners get $10 off baseball tickets the first time they use SeatGeek, which makes both of us ineligible. Use promo code BSMLB. Download the SeatGeek app today. Go right to SeatGeek.com. Get $10 off your baseball tickets. We're also brought to you by Hotel Tonight, an app that helps you find amazing hotel deals at the last minute, up to seven days in advance, perfect for a spontaneous getaway or indulging in a little staycation. You just use this for Summer League. For my Fultz getaway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go see Markel. Winger yeah. Summer League thing. You use Hotel Tonight. They were very gracious. Found us a nice room and a very nice easy. casino. I love all of Steve Wynn's hotels. Hotel Tonight. <laughs> uh, score a great price. Great place to stay. Get in on these killer last minute deals. Download the Hotel Tonight app right now. And we are brought to you by House of Carbs, our new food podcast, which I just listened to on the way up here. Joe House, finally. Food podcast. Did it make Joe you House. hungry? It did, actually, when he started talking about the Caprese salad. <laughs> so his first one, he had uh, Bon Appetit's Adam Rappaport. He had uh, Julia Lippman, who's going to be on every week with Food News, and then Danny Chow talking about hot chicken. But um, a very good debut. I, I was very pleased. I told him the one thing I really want is a recommendation of the week. It can be anything. It can be like a milkshake. It can be a cheeseburger. Yeah. It can be fried. Just something. The house. So we got to get that sponsor. House recommendations. I like yeah. it. Uh, and go to theringer.com. That's where we've been writing about all this NBA stuff over and over again. We had all these Gordon Hayward pieces ready. Yeah. How many Gordon Hayward pieces did we write? Like well, we ran four because we had a bunch ready and then the, he started screwing around. And then and we had to write more. We had to yeah. write the what's Gordon Hayward doing piece. So yeah. Yeah. We well, have like three or four. All right. We're going to talk about that in a second with executive editor of The Ringer, Chris Ryan. But first, here's Pearl Jam. All right, it is Wednesday, 9.40 a.m. Pacific Coast time, day after July 4th. I had two hot dogs yesterday. I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole bunch of stuff that's not good for me. And uh, and the Gordon Hayward saga was not good for me either. It kind of ruined my July 4th. I'm glad it worked out. But uh, just pick your team, Gordon Hayward. Yeah. Don't I hold think us hostage I, on an Independence Day. A lot of like, oh, it's not fair that he has only three days to just, dis- it's like he's had a long time to think about he's this. He's had his whole life to think about it. Yeah. How hard is it to ultimately decide, I don't mean to bitch about my new uh, all-star small forward, but I, I don't know what took so long. Just pick your team. Yeah, it did seem really strange. Also, you have to wonder whether or not it's coordinated with like the announcement they want to do like, this rollout. And then yeah. there's there was just obviously, he had probably made his decision but hadn't told the other teams personally and, and it started it leaking. Yeah. And then they tried to maybe rattle like, some cages by being like, oh, we got to regroup. Right. What are you regrouping? Yeah. I don't mean to hold people to deadlines. I guess we have to do that all the time when we're writing and stuff like that. But it would be very helpful for the personal lives of everybody out there who covers basketball if we could have a little bit more regimentation to this. Yeah. Now we're now it's just media guys complaining about stuff. But Sorry, yeah. With that said... It's ridiculous. This the these are the most important hundred hours of the off season, basically, yeah. other than the draft. And just by a fluke of the calendar, it's happening during these four and five day weekends every year in July when everybody's away, when a lot of people don't have access to the internet. You know, we can see it like with our traffic and with podcast traffic stuff like that. It's probably like about down 20% just because people are away. Yeah. And people aren't, they're not in front of their desk. Or Paul George getting traded on a Friday night versus the Markel Fultz deal a couple weeks ago. There's a huge on difference. On Monday, yeah. yeah. It because was like a 48-hour like, frenzy. Yeah, they're really participating in the conversation versus on their way to start a really long weekend. So I just what I'm mostly curious about is that in this day and age, you'd think that almost anything that could be eventized and, and made into a money-making venture by yeah. a sports league would be, right? If they could eventize like a guy getting his ankle wrapped, they would. So why not make this where the b- best players in the league now every summer change teams? And it's going to keep happening because these guys yeah. keep signing two-year deals, three-year three deals. Year deals. So everything's shorter. So so can we have like a a free agency night? Can we have a free agency telethon? Like what do we like a Well, that was basically Friday night, right? And my my family was away and I was home and I didn't end up I didn't intend to watch basketball all night, but the Paul George thing happened a good eight hours before the, or maybe it was like six hours before the July 1st thing. 
ESPN had this whole deadline midnight show ready to go. And they were on for two hours. Van Pelt had his sports center at midnight. But then on ESPN2, the jump, mm-hmm. they're ready to go. Three things happen before those shows. And you go to ESPN, ESPN2. I just want to watch people talk about what happened with Paul George. Yeah. There's this three hour window where it's like, I just want to read everything. I want to go on TV. I want to watch. I just want to watch people with heads talk about Paul George. <laughs> I don't care who those heads are. I want to see hands flailing. And there was nothing. It was like boxing was on ESPN2. Soccer, some some MLS game was on <laughs> yeah. ESPN1. NBA TV had like the, it wasn't the B crew or the C crew or the D crew. It was, I think they were just throwing suits on people who were in the studio and just throwing them on TV. Yeah. And there was no discourse. And it's like, this is just a waste. If you had like, if you designated June twenty seventh, you know, if you if you change the schedule so the finals end like June tenth, June eleventh, the drafts June seventeenth, June eighteenth, and then that first day free agency frenzy starts June twenty seventh, and it's like this is a day. Yeah. ESPN cleared out, cleared the decks. You guys are on for six, it would seven be like straight the first hours. Eight weekend of March Madness. It would be, it would be incredible. Yeah. Be like, well, who's going where? Well, Paul George. What? And it, and it just feels like they're missing the window. So hopefully they'll fix that. So let's go in order. Uh, well, let's talk about Hayward first. Let's. I can't wait. Talk about the Celtics. Yeah, you're a Sixers fan. I'm a Celtics fan. Well, let's talk. Let's talk first about. This seemed like this was the destiny of of how this was going to play out for months and months and months because of the Brad Stevens connection. Yeah. And near the tail end, there was some Utah. No, the oh, tail end it was all pangs. Miami. All weekend it was all Miami. It but was, then it turned out Miami was ruled out the night before. Right. But for, for, for days leading up to Tuesday, Monday, I felt like there was a lot of Miami noise that, it, that Riley did the dump the rings that every, you know, the, yeah. that South Beach was really putting the zap on his head. He was really into it. I'm out on Riley. Riley lost LeBron. Couldn't get Durant. I think the magic's gone. <laughs> and he's just a 71 year old guy who can't get guys anymore. Yeah, Who's sure. About? So Hayward, let's, let's do the pie chart. 50% Brad Stevens, I'm going to say. I'm going to say 25% Celtics tradition, fact that they're a contender already, um, and 25% Eastern Conference. And You the think fact that, that that came into play because he was like, if I stay in Utah? I'm going to say pro-con list. It's like, I'm in Utah. What What's my team? Who's got worse blue laws, Salt Lake City or Boston? <laughs> probably <laughs> Salt Lake City. But he's probably looking at it like, I played in this playoff series against the Warriors and we got waxed and we played pretty well and we lost every game. Yeah. We, it's not even like we can't say, oh man, oh, if we had done this, that. It's like, no, nah, we gave them our best shot. Game three, we played as well as we could possibly play. We lost by 10. And at this point, so I'm going to be here. I'm never going to be one of the best four forwards in the West. I'm never going to be on one of the best four teams in the West. I'm going to go this way. I'm so, go yeah, and I think not making all NBA might have had something to do with that. Definitely. Just because he's probably thinking to himself, like, I, I if I play in a, a in a market where more people are watching me on national television, it just increases the, the mind share I have on the NBA media and on the NBA fans. Like, it's just going to increase tenfold. That being said, I actually, after it all shook out and Danny didn't, didn't get what he got and I don't know that Boston's that much better than Utah in terms of being a team. It's a better conference to be in for sure. And it'll be a better conference for the years to come. I think they're a better team and more assets. Yeah. Don't you think? I think they have a lot of assets. In the seven game series, you just remove Hayward from the series. Who wins that series? Remove Hayward from the series and go back. Boston versus Utah, everyone's healthy. Hayward's not on either team. Boston will probably win. But in two years, Boston's going to have to make all these decisions about their great backcourt. All these guys who have been sort of keeping the team propped right. up for a couple of years, like Avery, Smart, and Isaiah. Yeah. And this could be the team. I mean, I know that everybody is always like, the, the assets, the assets. And he's going to have to get rid of some of them sooner or later. You can't just keep drafting small forwards. But I see, this was the summer they had to get somebody. I think now it's fine. Because now next year you pay Isaiah 30, 32, whatever. But you can go over the... They're basically in the same spot the Warriors were in this year with yeah, Durant. They, they, we were talking about guys. Jimmy Butler, Paul George with Hayward. That was always the thing was this two stars. And yeah. they kind of let the message get a little out of control. It's like you have Wick out there being like, we need two stars. you know. And, and I know that they... You shouldn't say that. Yeah, but now it's like they, you can't help but judge Boston's last three months as a failure. 
because they had the number. You sound like my dad. What if they had drafted Fultz and you have the number one draft pick? And I know that you think Markel Fultz have Jeff Green body language. I love. It was like yeah. it's, it's very detached. Yeah, right. Very He's really detached. detached. And Tatum's detached just Ricky. a monster. I know Tatum. Tatum, one of the great competitors. Tatum integrates with his teammates. It's basically, That's what Brian I like. Urlacher in a That's small what I like. place. <laughs> very, very good on chemistry. Sure, but. I just think if you draft Fultz and then you have this number one pick point guard of the future and you bring in Hayward, there's a different feeling of we chipped down to get this guy who is sort of in the same positional area as Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, and we're holding on to picks and we're just sort of keeping. And now it's starting again. It's starting again with Marcus Gasol today. Chris Mannix reporting that that they're going after Gasol. And it's like, okay, great. Man, Chris Mannix said that Boston was going to go after Marcus Gasol with a for trade. Really? Yeah. I think they screwed up the Paul George thing. Yes. My take on the Paul George thing is they they had really heavy talks with them at the draft. They came close. Indy said, we want to wait. Boston said, cool. If we're going to wait till after the thing, let us sign Hayward first, and then we'll come back. Pritchard's like, great. And then I think they made the mistake of just not checking in every six hours with them. I think the flip it's like side if you're buying that- a house, you check in with the realtor every, hey, nobody made an offer on the house, right? We're good, right? Yeah. I don't think they did that. I think they fell asleep. And I then all of a sudden Pritchard the, did this crazy trade. The, this was another thing that Boston didn't control the message very well about, which is this I, like this mysterious sequence of events that needed to happen so that they could get these two yeah, stars. Yeah, why are they in charge of the sequence? Indy right. has Paul George. This is what drove me, drove me crazy about this. Indy's in the driver's seat, not Boston. Right. But they're like, you got to wait for... Yeah. And, and if and that Kevin was the Pritchard's case, like, and if that you, was the case, they should have gotten a firm agreement and said, hey, yeah. Friday night, midnight, Gordon's signing with us. Well, they weren't the only team that... You know, I I I was in touch with a lot of teams after that, mm-hmm. and everybody, and this is confirmed by all the other reporters who talked to everybody too. Everybody was stunned. Everybody found out about that trade on Twitter. Pritchard never circled back last minute and said, "George is going. I need your best offer right now." He just made the trade, right? Which put this way, I judge everything in real sports by what happens if somebody does it in fantasy. First of all, in fantasy, if somebody makes that trade, people go crazy. Right. If I, if we're in a fantasy keeper league and somebody's like, I just traded Paul George for Oladipo and Sabonis, like, there's there's a hundred email thread about what a dick this guy <laughs> is. Get out of the league. Like, it gets really personal. You bring up the time he shit on himself in college. Like, it, it gets really ugly. See, the thing that I, I think it, I, I hate fantasy, but I think it's a lot like a fantasy trade because there's really not tanking in fantasy. And I think that's what people were really confused about is if Pritchard has this thick this guy, why not get as many picks and young players as possible? And instead he gets like a 25-year-old Victor Oladipo who has probably hit a ceiling of some sort and a Sabonis who was like okay last year, right? And is going to be okay I think this year. he was worse than okay. By the end of the year, it was really interesting hearing people talk about him as this prospect. I liked him coming out of college. He didn't have a position and he got worse as the year went along and in the playoffs couldn't play. Well, you know? I, don't and think I, think play, I don't think young players, I don't think Russ and young players mesh because young players yeah, need probably, Russ probably, probably consistent yeah. touches and, and as those games wind down, Sabonis either was benched or a ghost. But on the you court. know, I judge all this stuff by, uh, could you have played in the finals? I just watched. I don't think he has a position. You know, somebody like Olinick, who took a long time to kind of become somebody who could at least be the ninth man on a playoff team. And he's like basically a stretch five who can't rebound, can't really guard anybody. But if you play off him, he can either shoot threes or he can go into the lane and do the herky jerky Kelly Olinick stuff. So Bonus can't do that. He can't post up. He doesn't shoot free throws. I don't know what he is. But I think he's an 11th man. Or if what he wants is to stay around 40 wins at least. That's ridiculous. Like then they signed Darren Collison for twenty million for two years. That guy's a backup. You're paying a backup yeah. ten million. I think he did a terrible job. Like if I was a Pacer fan, I know they had to get rid of Paul George. I know he's leaving. I know he's going to play in LA in a year. Like we all get it. OKC's renting him for a year. They have no chance at resigning him. He's going to LA. Like for the the, the possibility of oh if they do well maybe he'll he's not staying. He's going to LA. The whole league knows he's going to LA. So this almost seemed like. Part trying to trick Westbrook into thinking that they're a contender and part just kind of throwing everyone off the scent for a year that the destiny of this team, if they don't sign Westbrook to that supermax, is that that is now the worst situation in the league. Right. 
So now you, you get Patrick Patterson, which I thought was really smart. I like the OKC team. Yeah. I think in the West, I mean, uh, in the East, that's a that's a three seed. <laughs> yeah. And in the West, it's like a, it's like a seven, eight seed. They're going to get annihilated in round one, but at least it's something. But I, I think the Celtics screwed up they, because there is a way for them to get Paul George and and uh, and Hayward and not give up Jalen Brown or Tatum. I think that have the all best case scenario guys. for Oklahoma City is that they have a lot of fun this year. Yeah, win a lot of regular season games. Like, like they they click, and then Deep they the somehow convince Westbrook. those guys to sign two year deals or something. It's not happening. They're not going to sign five years. I, this is the best case scenario. Right, that's their best case. Yeah, and that you're like, hey, why go to the Lakers who are basically rebuilding? Or you know, obviously their dream scenario is LeBron and George on the Lakers or whatever right. they've got planned, but. Presty wants to be able to look and say, like, why would you go to the Lakers and start over when we're, you know, this away from we're a Kawhi knee tweak away from being the second best team in the in the West? And Which, Paul George says because LeBron's going there. Yes. And yes. Who's the other guy who would go there? To the Lakers? Yeah. I mean, who take, are the other your, 18 free agents? Take your pick of like banana boat guys who would go go play there. Oh my God. I, it's it already makes me mad. I mean, the Celtics, that pick they got. When you look at how loaded the West is now, and they got this pick from Philly in the Fultz trade mm-hmm. that is basically guaranteed to be between two and five, or it rolls over this Kings pick, you can make a case that that pick is going to be between two and five. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to bet your life on it one way or the other, I would bet my life two and five because Sacramento is much better, Minnesota is much better, Denver got Millsap. The Clippers, who could have just punted on everything, instead, we're going to talk about it, went the other way and doubled down on Blake and Gallinari and now for they might get, $250 million. They might get Derrick Rose, which is just going to be a, just more injury incredible guys. for tendon surgeons in uh, Los Angeles. But you have Yeah, you have a terrible training staff, a coach who doesn't really emphasize practice or anything, <laughs> and then a bunch of injured guys. Yeah. It's a disaster. But you go down the line in the, in the West, it's like the Lakers are clearly the worst team in the West. Who is the second worst team? I'm. I don't even know. Uh, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix is probably. But worse I like than Phoenix's the, team. I think Phoenix is worse than the Lakers. I think late. Who, if you just go player by player, like Lonzo, it's gonna be early trying to figure it out. Lonzo. Lonzo, Brooke, Randall, Ingram. Oh, I forgot about Brooke. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty even. That's that'd be fun. So those are the two worst. Yeah. Booker might be 25 a game this year. Josh Jackson might be good right away. Aren't those guys all 20, though? I mean, I think yeah. that just at the end of the day, those guys will probably run out of gas a little bit on the back. So straight. that's your bottom two in the West. Yes. After that, you move into this weird zone of teams that became much more competitive and have ideas for the eight seed. Well, like that's Sacramento, the other thing about Denver. the West is these teams like Utah and Oklahoma and New Orleans who... I don't have much depth or maybe Utah's they should, another one. Yeah. But, or maybe they should blow it up, but they're going to stick around. You know what I mean? And, and I think Utah will play bully ball and like make things really right. hard for teams. I, I don't know what's going to happen. The new Orleans is really the, the mystery to me. Like they could be, is that, is that a playoff team with three guys? They have three guys. Well, and, and they just gave holiday way too much money for somebody. I, to me, durability with free agents is the most, underrated thing yeah that's and what da- danny tweeted that yesterday i thought it was really smart it's about crazy the teague versus george hill yeah dur- durability thing and george hill's missed what 80 games yeah. in the last three years but you look at gallinari who has played more than 65 games twice in his whole career you look at blake griffin who's been hurt eight different times who's hurt now who has something you know a healing plate in his foot on top of all the other surgeries he's had they gave him 175 million for five years and if you're wrong, you're screwed. Yeah. And that, you know, and your team's in a little bit of this mix too, because that all this buzz now about they're ready to compete and got brought the vets in. And it's like, I want to see Embiid play 50 games. Can I see 50? Yeah. I, it's totally Can fair. I see ben That's Simmons why we traded for 60? the number one pick. It's, insu- right. it's, it's, it's not only is it building a team, it's insurance. It's like, yes, we might have like, uh, a Mori Ball Olajuwon who can shoot threes and def- and defend the paint. But, Mori Ball Olajuwon. But I we like might that. also have like Damian Lillard who plays defense, which is great. You know what I mean? We might have like a foundational point guard. So if Embiid does wind up being a guy who who's just battling injuries the rest of his career and has never fulfills his potential, it's not. We're still in a good shape. We still have two other number one picks on the floor. You have homeschooled Damian Lillard who plays defense. <laughs> 
because they read it. People are like, "Hey, Mark Howe, do you know? Have you ever watched this show?" I was like, "No, I've never seen anything." But it was allowed to watch you. TV when I was a kid. <laughs> he made two blocks in that summer league game, which is one of the most entertaining summer league games oh, I've I ever watched it. in my life. Also, he's got the so like good. weird Chris Paul Harden change of pace already, where he like gets into the lane yes. and throws his butt out, and then like has one guy on his arm and he just does a little floater. I mean, I'm I will already say in love. though, and I, and I'm not ruling it out because I think he'll get older and stronger, but. I don't think he has the three point range yet. I think he has it if his feet are set. Yeah. But you could see it like if he's off balance, he almost can't even get it to the rim. He'll get he'll, he'll get, get there eventually. Off brand chip England wizardry will get dropped he has, down. This is why I love Brandon Roy in college and why I was convinced I just couldn't believe when he went six that year, even though I guess his knees were probably the yeah. reason. But he Fultz has that he has two moves that are just gonna be worth twenty points a game in the pros. The spin move that nobody has anymore except yeah. for like three guys and he could just go in traffic spin and he's already at the rim and then that little it's like it's like this he's like carrying it for a I second i believe that kevin durant called it a hezzy jimbo yeah the hezzy jimbo <laughs> i don't know if that's what he was talking about but yeah the, that little crossover <laughs> yeah. he has is is unstoppable and then he's got the pull up like that guy's clearly a scorer I love Tatum. I think Tatum's Paul Pierce. Mm -hmm. I think everybody wins. I don't think there's going to be any regrets or like, oh my God, we shouldn't have done that. I think every both sides are going to be happy. Great. I'll see you in the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay. I'm sure everybody who's listening to this we'll is be like, there. please give us a break. Did you know that you can listen to the Bill Simmons podcast and The Watch, your podcast with Andy Greenwald and others from the Ringer family on Spotify? I love Spotify. The streaming service that you know and love for music is fully loaded with podcasts. Find us in the podcast section within the browse tab when you're using Spotify and mobile or just by searching for the Bill Simmons podcast. How long have you been a Spotify guy? Years. And Andy and I just did a, a, a 4th of July barbecue playlist, which is still still relevant. Oh, yeah. You put the playlist on every once in a yeah. while, right? Yeah, How do yeah. we find those? Uh, you can find them at the WatchPod Twitter or okay. at like search the username Andy Greenwald or Chris Ryan 77. How was the 4th of July? The was mix? it better than the playlist I had going yesterday? No, you you had some really you had some classics. I had you know the what, can I tell you something that was nice about the playlist is that uh, aside from your your ardent respect for the DGC Rarities CD, yeah. which I love, yeah, uh, you had a couple of the classics on there. But I for some reason like I was listening to Young Americans by Bowie, and I was like, God damn it, David Bowie was really good at songwriting. Like it was like I there was a part of that song that I had sort of forgotten because you always remember the beginning and not yeah. the sort of the last third. It's just really a nice little moment with Bowie. He had, yeah, like 12 song. I feel like he's the lost guy from that decade. Bowie? Yeah. Bowie's God. I think people really respect it. No, for the jet, for the under, for like nephew Kyle's generation. Oh, nephew Kyle. The Bowie? kids? Dave Bowie? No? Yeah. He's giving a thumbs up. Yeah. I think he had so many good ones. I think he gets lost. Like, I think the Stones have endured. I think the Beatles have endured. Um, and some other ones, but. For the kids, yeah. For the kid, for the millennials. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, quick to follow us. Our new episodes for the Bill Simmons podcast to watch, any other Ringer podcast delivered right into your Spotify library. Head to spotify.com slash podcast for more. That's spotify.com slash podcast. Or just search uh, on the browse tab in the podcast section. Anyway, uh, quickly about Boston, because Boston has a really pivotal. <laughs> no, they, they there's nothing it. left, right? There's Let's no big it. free agents left. No. Weirdly, the biggest piece right now is this Jay Crowder trade that they have to make. And now it's 10 o'clock on Wednesday. But they have to trade Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder has a phenomenal contract, $7 million a year. Um, I think he's under contract for this year and the next two. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what's happened with the salary cap, which we're going to talk about in a second, where the salary cap goes backwards, nobody's prepared for it. It's a luxury tax disaster. Nobody has money. People have to get rid of guys. They're paying teams with number one picks to get rid of things. And here's Jay Crowder, who's started for a one seed on, on the Eastern Conference, who's an overrated defender, but he's above average. But I think I think the perception is he's an all-defense kind of defender. He's not. A good three-point shooter when he's open. Um, plays really hard. Durable. And is available now for $7 million. And it's a, it's a, like for a team like Miami, who struck out, mm -hmm. they just add him in whatever trade as a starter that makes them better a team like utah makes him makes them better i think he'd help milwaukee um indiana if they just wanted to continue their quest for 42 how impatient wins. are you do you want to get involved in a in a mellow situation do you want to do you want to start putting together a package no. for mellow? The, mellow the mellow ship is sailed okay 
So um, then what, so would you would want... they have to trade Crowder because they have to fit the Hayward so contract that, they have 24 that, hours. That would make sense for him to be part of a Gasol deal if that's going to happen. Memphis, like, they didn't offer Jermichael Green. They got rid of Zach Randolph. Right Memphis now... Memphis is doing what they should have done two years ago. Well, but they still have two All-Stars. So it's it, this is sort of one of the big things that's... that's it's kind of bothering me because I feel like it's punishing teams for doing a pretty good job. Like you either have to win the lottery five times, yep. like metaphorically and also literally, or you are bad. And if you have two great players, if you're New Orleans, if you're Washington, and you have great talent, but you just, because of the cap and because of the cap shrinkage, and it's like Washington's screwed for re signing Otto Porter. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, they have to hope that Kelly Oubre has like three more years. I would, I will only say the NBA has always worked like this. The cap has been in existence since 82. Yeah. And they've never really figured out how to make it fair for everybody. And right now the small market teams are in the worst shape they've ever been in because you can sign these long-term contracts now for a hundred million dollars that aren't long-term. They're right. three years. Right. And it's no, it's the risk on the players is so much less, but they're getting paid anyway. Whereas... In the old days, the the advantage would be, here's five years and a lot of money. And now for these players, it's like, I can go here for three years, a lot of money. And then I have my free agency right. three years from now. I don't know how these small markets regroup. And I this is the first summer where I really look at it and go, man, it would really suck to root for Utah or Indiana or Oklahoma City or any of these teams because... These guys are going to leave because the guillotine's hanging. Everyone's over you. Yeah. smarter. Everyone's smarter about creating cap space for targeting guys. The tampering is out of control. The guys on teams are just going and recru openly recruiting people from other teams. And I, I think we're in a real danger zone with with the small markets, which is exactly the opposite of what they're hoping for. Right. With that, this that's new what thing. I'm saying. Is it, it, I don't. So a team like Memphis is essentially being punished for having Gasol and Conley. You could argue maybe maybe we're at the point now where we have to start looking at should Memphis have a basketball team? No, they should have a basketball team. That's one of the best bat fan communities in the league. I'm with you. I'm making the case if like there's probably five markets in the league that I would call small, right? Memphis, OKC, um, Charlotte, maybe. Is Charlotte maybe Charlotte's a little bigger I, than medium? I, I think a lot of these places are Indiana. Yeah. Um, New Orleans is is not Orleans. necessarily an NBA town. Portland, or, Orlando, but, or do people love no, it? No, Orlando has the tax advantage. Yeah. But you could argue, like, should Memphis have a team and should she Seattle not? Seattle would uh, that's be not a where I would big start. market team. That's not where I, would, where I would start. Why wouldn't you start there? Because I think that the people, in, like, if you watch Memphis during the playoffs and if you watch Memphis during the regular season, like, they, I'm not, I'm not down. No, I know, the I know, fans. I'm not. I know it's not a referendum on the fans, but there is a support system there for a team, and that yes, that should they? Okay, have so then they why shouldn't have given Chandler Parsons ninety four million dollars? Like that is a problem, right? But part of the issue is that because uh, th these guys are all being punished for being like for trying their best. And so that you've got like Boston sitting on like three number one picks and the Sixers sitting on all these picks. And right. it's just like there's not an equal distribution of young talent throughout the league when this is the way when the lottery is the way it works. And well, but you had those are two flukes though, because Boston has the the Nets trade, which is but just isn't that just the flip side of, of making a stupid Chandler Parsons signing? You know, I mean, but that's the thing. If you're a small market, you can't screw up. Right, basically, right, that's what we've right. learned this decade. That's is what you can say. Yes, the Chandler Parsons thing. You screw that up, you've ruined your cap, and now it's over. Right, and you you have no way of regrouping other than to trade Gasol and Conley. I I don't know. It's like Memphis is a great example, right? Great fan base, love the team, super committed to it. They don't generate a ton of local revenue. Like their their local cable all that stuff, sponsorships, suites, court sides, they just don't make as much as a right. bigger market team. Their margin of error becomes, you know, you can almost touch your fingers together and they can't screw up. And what we're seeing now is like those six small markets with no margin of error, it's the bleakest thing we've seen in a long time. I think Cleveland is there too, the moment LeBron leaves. Yeah. You know, I think uh, there was one other team. Oh, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota was 10 years of just complete bleaklets. Now they have Towns, they got Wiggins, they got Butler. It's fine now, but maybe it's not fine in two years if Towns leaves, you know? And 
I don't know how they fix this. I really don't. Cause I don't think any, I don't think there's any market that should lose their team with the possible exception of new Orleans. I'm not positive why new Orleans has a basketball team. I think there, I think there was a lot of goodwill put into it, yeah. but I'm not positive that they're a better solution than Seattle. Right. I think Seattle should have a team. And if you just start looking like who, who should not have a team, you probably start with new Orleans. Now, Memphis, if they have to trade Gasol and Conley and start over, we haven't seen any of these small markets in a situation yet during the secondary market era yeah. where it's a shit show, yeah. where it's like, our team sucks and you should get season tickets for us because two years from now we're going to be good. But everybody would look at that and go, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to get season tickets. So now what do you do? So you think part? do you think part of the issue along with that is that this rule that was created for this these – max and super max deals that were supposed to entice the talent on smaller markets to stay didn't work and so far nobody has actually taken the deal right because you can make so much money short term now you don't need to you can do three for a hundred and like the Millsap contract so three what, for 90 so what what is that is that the did the players pull a fast one or is it is that i mean i i i, th- I, want I, the, think I don't miss- think there should be a cap i think these guys I almost feel like it should be like soccer where these guys can make as much but money as they no possibly cap, can. Now you're now you're crossing off all these teams. I guess so. I but the now cap's not every small the cap market is not where if you can have DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis on the same team and you have to like lock Drew Holiday into $130 million, that's the then thing. you're screwed. And that's not fair. It's not fair that the two best big men in the league basically are on the same team and it should be amazing. You should want to watch New Orleans every night, but instead you're gonna have to watch the ghost of Ashik come out. Right. Anyway, and it's just that's crazy. That's a competitive disadvantage when New Orleans has the looming Anthony Davis might leave thing combined with the looming Boogie can leave in a year thing. And they have to give Drew Holiday $125 million when he can't stay in the court. And we were arguing about it in our NBA Slack is he a top 15 point guard or not? They we, had no choice. We settled around he's 16, 17, he'll never be an all star. He's a pretty mediocre three point shooter for that position doesn't get to the line. I, I'm Plays higher 65 games. I, like I know Drew well, you Moore, watched yeah. him a while. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I also think that Good like defender. six four four point guards who know how to play the position and get a big man the ball yeah. is a huge deal. Having so, some kid who's only ever played like a season of college in AAU who doesn't know how to like pass to the post true. is not going to work for Davis. Like and what you're going to have with faults. <laughs> Just no, really no idea. I have to pass the post. We have more balls. Nine on. games in three years. Let him let Mar- him beat Marco run the post. Fultz. I wonder. So here, here's the other thing, and I if somebody has made this point, forgive me, but I haven't seen it yet. Are we headed toward you know Donald Sterling for years and years was basically like I'm being cheap with my team. Yeah, used the team as an ATM. Yeah, um, I'm in LA. I have prime beachfront real estate here, and um, that's good enough. And I'll just keep collecting your revenue checks. And the owners hated him. Mm -hmm. Never cared about making the team better. He was a tenant in the Lakers arena. Just didn't care. I wonder if we're going to head to a world now where four or five teams are going to look at this and go, you know what? I'll do, I'll do salary floor. I'll do a version of the hanky plan. My team will stink. I'm not going to pay money and I'm just going to rake in revenue sharing. The, okay, so I'm gonna make fifty pa- to Robert sixty Parra trades million away. A year. They trade away Conley and trade away Gasol, Gasol Conley, and it's like you write off the Chandler Parsons contract. This is what Indiana should have done. They can, I guess, because that you know I think there's the owner is one of those we got to compete every year, yeah. guys. Yeah, but Indiana should have said, if you want Paul George, take Monte Ellis's contract with him. Well, our salary will be at the floor. We'll make 65 million bucks. And we're in the Michael we'll Porter sweepstakes. We're in the yeah. Michael Porter sweepstakes and we'll rake in 60 million in revenue mm-hmm. because the revenue sharing is so high right now. I think that's the destiny for some of these teams. Well, that's going to be, if we're worried about what the NBA looks like now after this playoffs or like just the sort of competitive balance, it's going to be pretty dark if like 10 teams are just like, this isn't even, we're but, not but even But this here is, you, you're a Premier League guy. This is the Premier League. This is, yeah, but in the Premier League uses the threat of relegation. Teams. Right. So, I mean, they, they don't want that. You know, it's really hard to get back into the Premier League once you go down. There are teams right. that were in the Premier League five years ago that are falling out of the championship, that are going into League, league One now. So, they, they, that's that's those guys have to deal with the idea of basically going out of business. The, if Robert Perry doesn't have to worry about going out of business. Our dream scenario would be if, if the G League, now it's called, uh-huh. became great enough that it could be its own version of relegation and 
Yeah, but the the television deals and like deals these teams make with cities that would never they would never allow that. You know, I, I, that's why it's a dream scenario. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's like a cool version of this. Twenty teams That'd be awesome. in London. It doesn't. It's not the same thing. You know what I mean? Like there are teams in London who were in the Premier League and now aren't. You know, it's right. it's just the way it's geographically set up. It would never work. If we had a twenty four team league and then the bottom six were just would, in some other league, it'd yeah, be you and I have talked incredible. about this before. It would be great yeah. if there was like some sort of in season parallel tournament so that there was like an incentive to see good basketball from teams that pretty much are out of it. I would be so sad and bummed out if I rooted for one of these teams that is now clearly hopeless. And I have the only, the major experience I've had with just losing a star to another team was Clemens when he left the Red Sox for the Blue Jays. And that wasn't a small market thing. That was more of a respect thing. And then he got in shape and it was so agonizing and it made me so mad that, like, I can't imagine what a Utah fan feels about Gordon Hayward. It's like, I watched Gordon Hayward for seven years. I watched him develop. I'm, I'm talking as Utah fan. Yeah, sure. I watched him develop into this awesome all-star forward and this efficient scorer. And it seemed like he could never get to that next level. And then last season, he did. He was a, a, a legitimate go-to guy and a good team. And now he's gone. Well, here's so I think part of it is the way that we – it's hard to see outside of the bubble of like basketball Twitter and basketball media, but yeah. I think part of it is how we talk about basketball specifically, but pro sports in general, which is either it's titles or tanking. You're either like a title contender or you're tanking. And if it's, if it's anything in between, you're basically punching a car and like you're punching the clock. Cause you're not, you're on this treadmill of mediocrity. And that's but actually, what's weird is the but two- that's actually not that when you're, if you're a Utah fan and you're a fifth seed and you get out of the first round and you lose to the eventual champions. You're kind of like, that was a fun season. I hope that we can advance farther. But that was like a good use of your time, cheering for the Jazz. And it's like, yeah. I don't know that you're necessarily consumed with, man, are we stuck on the treadmill of mediocrity? Are we ever going to get out of the second round? We worry about that for guys like Chris Paul. We put that on them. But for fans, I think that, I think Wizards fans are heartbroken on a yearly basis, but would they take it all? Like, would they rather tank than have John Wall jump up on the scorer's table? That's but they like tank a great to get moment. John Wall, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just think I think that it's starting to permeate the way that teams are built. I think it's starting to permeate the way that players see themselves. And I think a guy like Paul George is like, I would rather be in a high profile situation with a lot of volatility like LA than just be a legend and have my number retired in Indiana and lose in the Eastern Conference semis every year. You know what's interesting about what you just said? Two teams that never did titles or tank were Boston and Houston, right? Daryl Daryl has two superstars now, did not have a top five pick, um, had multiple chances to just throw throw the team away and didn't, and just try to collect assets and pounce, right? which is what Boston did. Boston did the Pierce, uh, the Pierce-Garnett trade, and it seemed like, oh, here we go. Do the Isaiah trade, which makes no sense, like in the the big picture, whatever. But they were just like, he's an asset. Let's get him. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're pretty good. And now I'm pretty that leads skeptical to about this, the way Houston is constructed right now, though. I am too. Yeah. But I think if we were running Houston, we would take it. Like, sure. All right, I'll figure yeah. this out. Chris That's Paul what he's James thinking, Harden. right? He's yeah. like, yeah, this is like, this is what it takes. I, the only thing that I would say is that things change. And seven, eight years ago, we were talking this way about Golden State. I would say a year ago, we were talking about um, whether markets mattered anymore. Sure. And it's like, remember that? It's like Durant doesn't matter where Durant plays. He plays OKC, he's got the number one shoe. Yeah. And now I think it's flipped again. And now you're looking at Golden State, um, the Lakers matter again. I think the Knicks are eventually going to matter again. Boston, Chicago eventually. And then the Texas, Florida teams with the no income tax. And those I, are just teams that have huge advantages. I agree with you, but I don't think it's entirely financial. I think that we have gotten to the point, though, with this tanking and titles thing, that it's the reason why we're seeing talent clusters or, or super teams is because these guys are like a little bit more comfortable with the idea. Like this this whole, like, I have to win it all my own. And the only way we're going to determine whether Kevin Durant is better than LeBron James is if the Durant Thunder and the James Cavs went head to head and and Durant bested him. And that these asterisks is that we have fixed. Those are going away. They're fading. I don't think that in three years, if LeBron, Paul George, and I don't, I don't know who like, and Brandon Ingram win a title in three years. Lonzo. Yeah. And LeVar. Are you going to just say like Paul George, are you going to put an, like Paul George is going to feel the same way about doing that as he would have if like, 
he got to the Eastern Conference Finals with Indiana in five years with Miles Turner. Let's talk about our longtime buddies at Simply Safe. Okay. Getting a good night's sleep, easier said than done, especially when you think you just heard a noise downstairs. That's happening in LA, right? I don't have like, a downstairs, but yeah. Or like a lot, noise lot of outside. weird noises outside. Yeah. Yeah. What is that noise? Is that a coyote? Yeah. Uh, what do you do in that situation? Turn on all the lights, keep watch, take your kids' beds every hour. You don't have kids. Sleep with one eye open or rest easy knowing your home and family are protected with Simply Safe when you install Simply Safe home security system. You're arming your home with powerful sensors that actually tell you if a door opens or if one of your windows breaks. Kevin Pritchard should have had this with Paul George. <laughs> should have Simply Safe in the indie offices. 105 decibel siren that alerts you the first sign of trouble. A dedicated team of security professionals watching over you 24 7, ready to send the police with Simply Safe. No long term contracts. Around the clock monitoring, only $14.99 a month. God, Kevin Pritchard, so close. Just $14.99 <laughs> a month. Could have kept Paul George. Don't spend another night second guessing your home safe to get Simply Safe, get some rest. Go to simplysafebs.com and get a special 10% discount when you order today. That's Simply Safe with two eyes. Simplysafebs.com for 10% off your order uh we got to run through some stuff quickly here okc love it i'm so, so excited paul george westbrook mm -hmm. patrick patterson Pat, Pat. with a very smart signing stephen adams yep and robertson and ennis Cantor. just those five it's a pain in the ass team to play yeah that's a that's a like a bulldog good defense there's three point shooting. Should I say right now? Can we just say right now that they are paying more for this team than they would have if they had just kept the for the original guys? The Jay, yeah, the James Harden rent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just that's out of the way. So I think Presti, you know, I I still think the James Harden trade was the worst trade of this decade, but did a nice job. The Paul George rental for a year. Let's see what they have. Let's make a run. Maybe we upset some guys. Like they now have a puncher's chance. They're making the playoffs for sure. They're making the playoffs. Who the hell knows? Also, can't you get they there? hold a Paul George auction in February if they want to? That's the thing. And that's the part everybody missed with this trade. It's like, well, they're renting him. This is stupid. It's like, yeah, they're renting him, but he's a fucking asset. And mm -hmm. in February, you might be able to flip him for more than Victor Oladipo and, and Sabonis. Like, if they got rid of Oladipo at, at, uh, on July 1st or June 30th or whatever, just for expiring contracts, people would have been like, smart. Smart salary cap space, good, right. good move by them. And instead, they the the expiring contract they got was Paul George, right? Smart. And the GM list Cavs, if they get to February and it's like a beer, weird bad season of of back back to people getting cut out of Instagram photos and griping about who, yeah. whether or not they're willing to pay to keep the team, would they would they do Love, who's still under contract? For Paul George, Love's got to be bummed. He was in like forty trade rumors. Yeah, that's, that's not going that's, well. That's we're st we're back at that point. We're back at the point where we were with the first Blatt season, where everybody's going to be a little bit uncomfortable with each it's other. It's bad. I, I can feel him checking out during that finals too, as just like he knew he was going to be the fall guy. I got to say, this was the point that has not been made enough during this Paul George thing. I can't believe they didn't just take Kevin Love for him. If you're going to pay twenty plus million a year for Oladipo and Zabonis. I'd much rather Who have knows Kevin if they, Love. But like the Cavs fired or got rid of their GM right before what they was it for. Yeah, the, but they were trying to do three team trades to send Kevin Love to right, Denver. Because they needed to send, they wanted to get the if pick you're in back. It, just take Kevin Love. Right. All right, we'll we'll take him. We'll take a guy who averaged a 26-14 four years ago and who has played big minutes in finals games and was badly misused and mismanaged in Cleveland. Like, look, we'll roll the dice with this guy. He might so be one of the best offensive forwards how, in the league. How much of a conspiracy theorist are you about this? Like, does it bother you, like, the idea that... Oh, there's no conspiracy. Well, he didn't He didn't want to help Paul George win the title. Pritchard. Who didn't? Pritchard. I think this was... I will go to my grave thinking this was 100% a spite move, that they had this silent agreement, and then Paul George went public and said, you know, they and should he, trade yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, he was, that was Pritchard a very was candid like, press conference he did where he was yeah. like, this is a gut punch. This yeah. comes at the worst possible time, et cetera. I think I he just, was like, screw you. I'm not sending you to the Lakers. I'm not making you happy there. I'm not sending you to a team that might actually win the title. That I'm going to have to see you four times a year. Yeah, I'm not sending you to an Eastern Conference juggernaut like Boston, potentially. Go to OKC. You'll be a six seed. You'll win nothing. And now you're on your own. Screw you. I really feel like that's what happened. I think it was a trade made out of spite. And I think he made a mistake. I just, at the end of the day, like whether that's the case or not, I think that, 
I think that Ainge and the Cavs both have to be like, well, we could have had him. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah, Ainge more than the Cavs. Yeah. Ainge, I, I just feel like they... And you could see it because right afterwards you, they're leaking everybody. Do you care about LeBron not recruiting for the Cavs at all? Yeah, I think it matters. I think the two most under the radar fascinating things was that LeBron's clearly going to be a free agent in a year and didn't made it clear to everybody I'm here for one year. And I think John Wall not accepting the Supermax was a fascinating wrinkle. Why not? Four years, $168 million. Here it is. Sign. Are you going to be in Washington or not? Why didn't he accept it? If you're gonna, if you know you're gonna stay in Washington, and you know that's your team, and you're Who's John Wall's with, agent, yeah, Rich yeah. Paul, yeah, just Clutch. Saying. yeah, I think that's a significant thing, and I don't know why that wasn't a bigger deal because he's on a team now with Beal and Porter, and they're spending money so and the over Lakers the tax, point guard. huh? <laughs> there's the Lakers point guard that you were wondering about. So you'd have John Wall, Lonzo, LeBron, Paul George, Brandon Ingram. I can you, I don't even know if, if you can get all those guys, but I think you could if you get rid of the Mozgov deal. You use Randall to get rid of Mozgov in February. You well, they traded in, Mozgov. They got you rid of not Mozgov. Uh, dang, dang, yeah, 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 the dang. So deal. They'll, well, they'll have like eighty next year. So you think John Wall? You Some think it'd be a clutch team. I'm just saying that there's that the, that is in the, the clutch all stars. Sure, sure. I th- if I'm if I'm a Wizards John fan, John Wall wants to win a title. Like John Wall, you can. You, and like, we're not I, positive he likes Beal either. No, I think he does, and I think those guys like play really well together. But you positive? I think he likes them. Like, yeah, they seem much closer at the end of the year than they did at the beginning of the year. For whatever, he likes Bill. Why doesn't want to stay with him? Because he wants. That's a. He's obviously got a huge chip on his shoulder about a number of things. One is the fact that he thinks he's probably way better than the talent around him and that he should be competing for a title. And I love that about him. It's like he is one of those guys where it's like when he gets on the court and he's I'm playing against Steph, tongue. he's like, I'm better than Steph. It's the same thing the Westbrook Not in the half court. I love the way that he plays. I think that he's probably like, he really wanted Paul George to come to DC. I think they want, he wanted that to happen, but there's nothing there. So now he's looking at his supermax where it's like, essentially the rest of his career will be in Washington. The best years of his career will be in Washington with Bradley Beal, which is like a pretty that nice backcourt. That sounds back great. Court. And that's it though. And get Boogie in a year. Well, then they should hire... They should get themselves a GM who knows what, like, who can really make some st- stuff. If he's happen turning there. down forty million a year guaranteed from DC on a team that almost made the conference finals just now, I'm alarmed. If I'm a Washington fan, yeah, he, I'm just flat out alarmed. Yeah, and like, so, really? and I'm you just saying, like, down? between the two, the two things of like John Wall not signing a max deal and LeBron being awfully quiet over this period of time, that just feels like. Could you see Wall? See, I, th- I think Wall and Boogie are tight, and I wouldn't rule that out either. They're no, just and going that's to, been the, that's they go been, to like Atlanta, right? And just like let's start our own team in Atlanta, and Coach Cal, Coach Cal is our coach GM. Let's just have the all Kentucky All Stars. What the hell is Atlanta doing? Atlanta, I don't even know who runs Atlanta now. Travis, Schenk, I think Atlanta right? did the worst job of anyone this these these last two summers. Because somehow they paid Baysmore and didn't pay anyone else. They paid like their they six were best one of those, guy. Those, them, them and Portland were the two teams that I think were a little bit victims of what Portland of, of the cap of the cap explosion and then the contraction. Right? Olshay simultaneously is was the worst guy of the last fifteen months, but then made two awesome trades. Right. He got he got Nurkic. He got Nurkic for nothing and got a first round pick out of it, and then somehow moved fifteen and twenty to ten. He took the wrong guy, but that's fine. They still got Collins. It's better than being at fifteen and ten. Um, I think this this whole cap thing. If I'm any team right now that has a chance to keep cap space and just cherry pick dudes like the Jay Crowder types that are going to start becoming available, that's where I want to be. This is the biggest bummer of all this, by the way, is that we're back to talking about cap space. No. We're, Oh yeah, yeah. Just in general, like well, we, had we like of, this stuff though. I I don't mind it, but I didn't. I like this. I like the other parts you about like this storyline. I don't love the accounting as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it, and it's obvious that something went wrong here. So many teams are going to be in paying luxury tax just to keep their their cores together. So that just seems like it's this. Like, it's not working quite right. Speaking of accounting, let's talk about the Watch Podcast really quickly. You okay. and Andy Greenwald. <laughs> when did it start? Two thousand eleven. Yeah. How many have you done? You think? Uh, oh, since we since the ring started, tw- yeah. two weeks. No, since since, since Grantland. Oh, probably like five hundred. I mean, I've been doing it for years. It's one of the signature pop culture podcasts out there, and your guys are about to hit your version of the playoffs, oh, that's Game right. of Thrones. Yeah, I thought I was done, but they pulled me Game back in. Game of Thrones. You you have a couple Game of Thrones things going on because we're doing this show for Twitter that we're super excited about. Last year we did uh, After the Thrones yeah. on HBO. 
Watch the Thrones or After the Thrones? After the Thrones. It was after Watch the Thrones. the Thrones when it was at Greyland, After the Thrones in right. HBO. And the problem with the HBO thing was because of all their satellite deal, all that stuff, it couldn't run till 26 hours right. after the show, which is weird. It would be like having an... You know, the post game show of an NBA playoff game happened 26 hours after the game. Yeah. It's just a weird way to do it. Now we're going to be on Twitter. We're pinned at the top of the Twitter feeds. Talk the Thrones. Talk the Thrones, which we'll, we'll do a preview show and then we'll have seven during the, uh, during the seven episode run. You and Andy Greenwald, your watch partner, and Mallory, Mallory Rubin, and Jason, Jason Concepcion. Game of Thrones ends. Go on Twitter. Boom. We'll be there. We're off 45 minutes. I'm excited because I watch Game of Thrones. I don't know half the guys. I, I know <laughs> half the ladies. I don't know what happened half the time. And I just want somebody to tell me what happened. We're, 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 your, we're, your, guy, we're your team for that. We're going to do it. Is Mallory going to be able to physically make it? Yeah. Mal's, Mal's replenishing herself. She's, she's in, my, she's in <laughs> Miami doing, doing the, the blood platelet treatment. Yeah. She could do Tour de France. She went she to Italy. Back. No, she's, she's coming back strong. Okay, so because Mallory is doing the uh, binge mode, mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, we have put up five seasons, and if you want to relive Game of Thrones and get ready Highly for Highly recommended it, podcast for it's, me. It's the deepest of the deep dives. Yeah. There's never been a deeper dive. This is like, what's that movie, 47 Meters? Yeah, this is, no, this is The Abyss. Oh, this is The Abyss. Yeah, this yeah. is Mary Elizabeth this is James Master Cameron. Antonio. <laughs> yeah, we're just in a cave way down there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so you can catch up on Game of Thrones on binge mode, and then The Watch with... Yeah. Chris and Andy. Andy's now like a famous TV person, but somehow still slums it for us and does nice podcasts. Yeah, he's like a real dude now. Uh, Clippers, quickly. Yes, I can't wait. What they the hell? They paid Blake one set, five years, 175, <laughs> uh -huh. which is just a Hail Mary. I, I say this as a Clippers season ticket holder who was having conversations with uh, Tolan, who I shared tickets with, and we're like, we're screwed if they let, if they decide to blow it up. We've already paid for our tickets. This is going to be a disaster. They go the other way. They, they overpay Blake, make him the face of the franchise. We have no idea if he can play five years. That's 410 games. What would you say the over-under is? 260? Uh, yeah. 410? Yeah. What, would you, what would you give me? Two, 265, you go over-under. I would go over. I'm you gonna, go over I, 265? I, 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 I kind of like the idea of this team running through Blake. I, just, I can't wait to watch it. I forget that because I agree with you on that. I'm just saying from a durability standpoint. You're yeah, betting it, your life. You're betting your life and Phoebe's I'd life. I'd probably go under. 265. Go under. You have to bet your life and Phoebe's life. Yeah, I'm life. not going to go over on a guy who, who has had multiple leg injuries. Going and then over Gallinari that. for three years, 65. I'm going to say a possible 246 I games. I can't believe they got the small forward they've needed for five years the, the week after Chris Paul leaves. 175 over under? Oh, man, that's bullish. He just keeps pulling under. his knee out, right? I'm going to say 160. He's, he has like a lot of those, like he has the ACL and then he'll have like all the other things that happen because of the ACL, right? There's a sneaky case to be made that the Clippers are going to be terrible next year. I can't wait to watch them. I think because they're going to be... It's because it's either going to be a, it's a fantasy complete team. meltdown or it's going to be really fun. Because Point Blake is something I, I'm really excited for. The whole ringer is on... Jarks wrote the piece a week ago. KOC's been on that, on that for a while. I've been on that. You've been on it. We just... We want to see an offense run through Blake. We love when it happens. We love him as point forward. The problem is he's not going to play until December at the earliest. <laughs> he has a broken plate in his foot. So yeah, when they say I, you know, NBA injury lying would be a fun, right, fun video for us. Where like he's back in December. It's four to six weeks, and it's always eight. It's back in December. That means February. You should be careful here because I I did the Brad Stevens being like he looks good. Oh Isaiah, I'm not I'll, a doctor, but he looks very good. Very careful. I'm being very careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, if he misses the first two months of the season, and they here's the thing with the Clippers, like you can look at all those names, but like I like that guy, I like that guy, I like that guy. There's no creator. There's no facilitator. Yeah, Patrick well, Beverly's not running the offense. Right. Austin Rivers ain't running the offense. He's probably the most shoot first guard. I he probably averaged like an assist a game. And then who's the other guard they have? Did I, they sign anybody else yet? I don't think so. They're that's why they're looking at Rose. Like Derek Rose. Yeah. And then all of their perimeter guys are all like, I need the ball. DeAndre, obviously. So it's like if Blake's out for two months, I don't even know who runs their offense. It's not gonna be Patrick Beverly. You think they'll make the playoffs? And then you have a lazy coach. I love that they like <clears throat> This is just, he's still acquiring 2010 guys. Like, when was Gallo last great? 
when was it gallo was green on like the so 2013 gallo, or 14 no, gallo nuggets had a, team? his i bet it was monitoring because he was on the celtics radar his last two months were good okay last season he was healthy he looked at gallo he's 18 a game he plays with fire like we all like him when he's on the court yeah I don't think the rooster, man. I love Gallo. Like, do you honestly think you play DeAndre Blake and Gallo together at crunch time, though? No, no. So not this at all. is this is not a well put together team, but it's going right. to be really fun to watch. The Bill Simmons theory, which has been proven again and again, is your four highest paid guys. If you can't play all four of them together against the team you need to beat, you're in trouble. Yeah. Now Cleveland got out of that two years ago because they could play the four guys together. Right. Last year they couldn't. They had to pick between Love and Thompson. So now you're screwed because you're spending 80% of your salary cap on these four guys and you can only play three. I don't see how DeAndre Blake and I my gut is if they think Blake's healthy, they're gonna flip DeAndre for something. Yeah, that has to be I mean there's also that's we play. have it remains to be seen whose team is this? Is this Docs or Jerry's? There's going to be a team, and this usually happens in football, but basketball we don't see it as often. There's gonna be a team in the West that we think is a playoff team that's gonna be awful. And we're like, wow. Okay, so who's it gonna be? for twenty five win? I think the Clippers are the number one choice. I don't I'm not I'm not predicting them, but I, I'm saying like between them, Minnesota, um, Oklahoma City, right? What Portland? One of these teams. You don't think that there's were... a little? I, 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 think that they're probably just too good for this to happen. But you don't think that there's a little bit of a chance that it's going to take a really long time for Houston to get this together? Harden's too good. D'Antoni is a little bit like that yeah, Harden... two, three year, like, and then guys are just like, "What are you? What are you doing?" I like the PJ Tucker signing. Yeah, I know it sucks. They have that they, pieces. They're so good. They have pieces. They, they, I keep forgetting that like they've signed like other three I other know. guys that are just really good. They brought Nene they back. They just have they've seven really good basketball players. Yeah. It's gonna be hard for them to stink. I think he's also just really good at finding scrappy he'll guys. Find, yeah, he'll yeah. find some second runner. I think uh a Clippers team that's built around Blake, who we have no idea when he's coming back. Sure, is that, a, they, is may, the they may not make the flex. Yeah. With especially with like Denver with Millsap. Denver, I mean, Den- Denver's got a good team, man. Like Jokic, Millsap, and Harris. Let's talk about them. Yeah, if Moutier could just hit the side of a barn, like it would, they they would be good. So, what do we think their crunch time team is? So they have like Chandler and all those guys are still like all the Gary Harris, right? Jokic, is Millsap. A- I don't even know if Barton's. All right, crunch so let's time. go. Gary Harris, Jokic, but Millsap. like Samir Nelson played a lot of minutes for them last year, right? So who is their their crunch time point guard is going to have to be Jamal Murray, who's not a point guard, right? They're gonna have to run the offense through him and Harris and. But the I, thing is, is if you got somebody who can pass like Jokic, Jokic, do you need a pure point guard? You don't. You don't. You, but just you need, need somebody to bring the ball up the floor and hand it to him in the high post. You need somebody who can handle the fast break, though. That's the thing. That people like, yeah, you can run the half court through Jokic, but right? You Moody need is somebody actually to pretty push fun it. in the in the transition. But he just can't shoot. Moody is like fifteen. Is Moody older than our interns? <laughs> Is Moody Moody older like than, Bowie? Is he, <laughs> is he older than Kyle? He's probably not, right? I don't, I don't think so, no. The thing I love about Millsap for Denver, and it was just the all-time under the radar, like nobody has an opinion on Paul Millsap. He's been the most boring star in the league for 10 years. But like when they had that 60-win team, the ball movement, mm-hmm. he's such a smart offensive player, and he can do – he's just malleable. And now you put him with Jokic. I think that's a really nice mix. Yes. I think that's going to work. Yes, I agree. And I think Murray's going to have a big season next year. I think Harris is like becoming a really good two-way player. Right, so I think let's go. Be good. Let's go. Denver, Minnesota. Denver, Minnesota. The Clippers. And Portland. No, because I think al- Portland's lower than all those teams. Yeah, but Portland's, OKC. Al- but Portland's always going to be in that zone. Right. Okay. Denver, Minnesota, OKC, Clippers, and New Orleans, and Portland. And then New Orleans, I'm out on. Okay. Um, which one of those teams could be the surprise 50 winner? 50, 50 win team. OKC. OKC you're going. OKC is going to kick ass next year. Okay. That's, that's. The surprise 50 win year is, is that one. Is, is, is Oklahoma City has a really, really good starting lineup. I have some concerns. Do you want sure. to hear them? Yeah, of course. But I, but the, the whole thing about OKC is it's either going to be a, like incredible success or they're going to see that it's not working. Russell hasn't signed his deal and they're going to try and get what they can for George. We, we had a really good first year at the Ringer, especially the last two months. Mm-hmm. We had like our best traffic months. Thanks to everybody who supported the site. It was just really awesome. I feel like this involves me getting traded for draft picks. No. 
we had a nice thing going and you were kind of the shepherding the big picture coverage on the NBA side. Mm -hmm. Much like Russ. <laughs> Russ was shepherding the offense. Fantasy just broke a pencil in his hand. <laughs> well, fantasy, so fantasy is Sam Presti. Oh, God. Now um, he definitely broke three pencils. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's say you and fantasy together are Russ. Okay. This is my favorite conversation I've ever had. 30 shots a game. You're just, this is, you're the offense, run everything. Now, all of a sudden, Paul George, the idea is NBA idea, Paul George shows up. Okay. And we just have to shoehorn him in. And you guys are like, we have a good thing going. I'm used to shooting 30 times a game. I get to take every shot at the end. Now this guy's in every meeting. No. Got to work him in. Look. Wait. Oh, this guy has an idea for a theme week. I don't know. I like shooting 30 shots a game. I worry about a little bit of a- Flip side to that. Okay. Russ just spent the first five, six years of his career or whatever it was with Durant. Where it was essentially everybody knew Durant was the best player on the floor. Every night people Russ were like- didn't know that. Yeah. But I think Russ I don't felt think the opposite. George is going to come in and be like, "Hey, I need to get thirty shots a game." I think George is going to be a great no. off the ball player, an incredible defender. I think George likes to get the ball in the last two minutes, though. I think I think he's one of those. You know, he likes to hear about YouTube clips. Yeah, so that's going to be it, hopefully like there will be. You enough watched OKC next year. Everyone had to stand around and watch Russ on every play. That's because he was the only good player they had last year. My question is, did he develop too many bad habits last year to now be Guys like, oh, I got to worry think he, about Paul. I think he'll be fine. I think that if you were going to look okay. for one shocker you surprise 50-win team, I think it would be the Thunder. I don't know if it would be a surprise. Uh, but you were asking the surprise. So what What would you say? Denver's the 50-win team? It's. I don't think it's going to be the my, my two picks would be OKC or Denver, I think, have a chance to hop it. I also think maybe because of that conference, it's going to be really tough to even compete at. So to go 50 and 32 in the West might be too hard. I was just going to ask you about this. So the, the weird, the one of the weirder things that happened yesterday morning was the Kings rush on veterans. And I've never been a George Hill guy. I, I just hate paying somebody 20 million a year. Who's not an all-star. Okay. So one of my do you think that's good or bad for De'Aaron Fox that he's there? I think he can play off the ball. I don't, yeah. I don't think he can play like two guard. I think it's fine. I would just would rather have Malik Monk. I agree. With you. <laughs> if I'm gonna if I'm gonna pay George Hill twenty million a year to play these combo guard minutes, can I just have Malik Monk? And instead of trading down to fifteen, so what and do you 20, think their over under for wins would be next year? It's still a bad organization with a lot of weird pieces that I haven't played together. You know, I kind of like them. I kind of like what they Fox have. Is, Fox is going to be super raw. Don't forget how raw Fox is going to be next year. I'm I'm as big of a Fox fan as there is. Yeah, He's not going to come in right away be, and it's be good. good. They're just, if they were in the Eastern Conference, I'd think that they... Remember John Wall that first year? He was just playing at 190 miles an hour yes. and he just... That it's couldn't be shoot. Fox. Right. Fox is going to be like... A jet. Who else do they have? Let's go through it. They have Fox, Scal, Willie Cauley, Buddy. Uh, they so, have... So if Buddy was... If Buddy could go up a level, that would help. They and then they, they have some Giles sort of guy. and Giles, Justin Jackson, who yeah. I think hurt his foot. No, that was I'm Justin Jackson. Neither foot. of those guys. Um, they feel like the third worst team in the West to me. And then they have Zach and Dave Zebo and George Hill. Getting Zebo about three years too late. Yes, George Hill. I'm not sure he could stay in the court. Zebo reunited with Jaeger. I like that one. Yeah, maybe a little Tony Allen next for them. Is he free agent? <laughs> oh God, grit and grind West. So the biggest the grit and grind retirement home. So the small picture. Oh, what, did you like what Toronto did? Because I guess they had to. They're locked into a three seed. I think I agree, Kevin. That they they got everybody to come back. They lose Pat Pat. Norman Powell played really well. Hopefully, if you're a Raptors fan, he gets back. Just gets and Pat then I just think that they're, they're the same. They're almost in the same situation. As uh, not quite as Oklahoma City, but they have Masai, and assuming he doesn't go become the head of the Knicks, I just don't think that any of those guys there are. That doesn't mean that's going to be the team in 2018. They could trade. They could trade guys. Are they the three seed next year? I think Washington's going to be better than them. Okay, I would go Washington three seed, Milwaukee four seed, Toronto five seed. You think Toronto? But Toronto had like a was like incredible last season on offense. I just feel like Giannis goes one more level up. If I don't here, here, I don't like love the Milwaukee vibes. Here's the thing. If you're making a big picture bet on Giannis as a future MVP, this should be the season that he jumps. <laughs> this should be his 48 win MVP young MVP candidacy season. 
So, but you have to just be like, I believe in this guy. I think he's going to be the MVP someday. The natural check mark that he's about to hit in his career should be this season where he takes a okay. team that's not that great and, and pulls them up. Right. That, that, that's, that, that he the only gets, reason that, that's the case night. for them yeah. for four. Yeah. Right. He's 25, nine and nine he and eight. He really went. He's first team he took NBA. a jump last season. If I'm if I'm remembering this correctly, I can't. I'd have to look at it, but I feel like he emerged even more once Jabari went down. Yeah, as did Brogdon, I think too a little bit. I didn't like Brogdon in the playoffs. Now he's a rookie, so you can't judge it too right. much. But I thought he got a little exposed in the play. It's almost like you don't want to lean on him too much. He's an overqualified third guard, but if he's actually running the offense, they need Thon him. to be good next year, they and they need Jabari to be healthy. Figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Can Philly be a f- six seed? I mean, you like the Redick Amir Johnson moves. You know Amir Johnson's cooked, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. I, I like I like them for they haven't had a consistent veteran presence there in a really long time, and at all. You know what I mean? So I, I think that JJ is great for twenty three. Um, Red, I'm really interested to see what happens to him because I didn't like the season he had last year, and I thought he was a defensive liability. And he did not jack well, up. Luckily, enough he's threes. in the Eastern Conference now. So, like, who's well, that's he, the thing. Yeah. I I think they used him poorly. Got to guard Alfred Payton. Like, what's he? <laughs> right. Well, I think they used him poorly, and I think uh, I think the vibe on that team was really weird, and I think it affected him. I'm interested to see him on a team where they're like, JJ, you're shooting eight threes a game. Yeah. We're running you around screens. Um, shoot the ball. And he's got two Just good shoot. passers. If you don't shoot eight threes tonight, we're finding you. I like that team a lot. I, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic. I would I would love to get to the bottom half of the playoffs and be and have him be playing in that. I don't want to have the Eastern Conference, Western Conference thing because it's it's that conversation's annoying. So you think that there's always gonna be this pendulum that swings back? You don't it's, think it's it it I think there's smarter GMs in the West right now and smarter owners and they It's been they, a long I feel like it's been a while we've been talking about this Western Conference. What about when it was Miami and Miami and Boston and um and Thibodeau's Bulls. And the Knicks and the Bulls. Like there was a while where all of a sudden the East looked more loaded. I think it's, I don't know. I think it's mostly like, last question. The Sixers fans. Mm-hmm. I'm a little worried about you guys from a karma standpoint. Okay. Um, Thanks for your concern. Don't the, you worry uh, about yourself for karma? You guys have you, you guys have been sitting in the catbird seat for a long time. No. Okay. I don't, I don't, as long as LeBron's in the league, I don't ever feel like we're going to win the title <laughs> until he's out of the conference. So you feel like we're just too, uh, a little too celebratory. I, I think it's fun. It, I think it's fun, but I also think like you haven't won the process yet. The process hasn't won. Nobody we don't said have it's, a final nobody's won the process. It's just that okay. this is like Brian actually, Colangelo actually like fulfilled what you want to have as many great potential potential players at once and hope that one of them hits. I don't think Kinky trades up for Fultz. Oh, I disagree completely. I think Kinky stays where he is and loves having that extra pick. Nah. Come on. Let's get it going. Let's the actual it. process is collect assets. Not forever. How do we know? He never <laughs> The architect of the process never told us what the what the outcome was supposed to be. I, I'm I'm very happy with what they're doing. And I'm not, and I'm not, I don't think that, I think it's wrong to assume that just because people are excited that they got faults and think that the team is going to be really good, that that means somehow they're like, we've won the, the, the sort of offseason well, I mean, title. They, they, they did some social media stuff that was aggressive. What the retweet Armageddon? Yeah. Did that retweet Armageddon like- was a little <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> that was really fun. Okay. Yeah. Is it, is it fun or is there an edge to it? There's no edge to it. There's just, it's just that there was five years of people being like, what a bunch of shitheads in Philadelphia. They don't like, they're just lo- like losing on purpose. And now we have two of the last number one draft picks, the best draft and possibly the, the best draft pick, the, the Embiid pick would have been number one if he had been healthy. You know what I mean? Like we have like all of this collection of talents. So I think people are saying this, this idea. He threw away four years of basketball though to get there. I know, but I, I feel nobody I, cares. I don't feel a day older. Okay. <laughs> and the Embiid thing he's played 31 games in three years. That's I'd rather, not a concern. Wouldn't you rather I'm just have doing, I'm devil's advocating all of this. Embiid as like the guy who flew too close to the sun. I would rather have him every day than uh, Jabari. So even that four week run when Embiid, we all lost our minds. Yeah. That made it worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that's this is the thing is that like I think that you got to have fun with this stuff because otherwise you do get too caught up in the titles or tanking thing. So and I know that the Sixers are just as guilty of that and the Sixers fans are just as guilty of that. But I love like give me give me more of that. Give me more of like small victories. It's okay. 
I will say just selfishly, as somebody who loves watching basketball, especially on random nights at, you know, nine o'clock yeah. on a Tuesday night, I guess it would be six o'clock here. The Sixers have more players that I enjoy than just about any other roster. I, I, I like Sarge. Agree. If you go back to the draft, like I fucking love Sarge. I even I made some joke on you on during the draft about uh when they took him, I made some joke on the telecast about I fell in love with him at 3 30 in the morning on YouTube yeah. 10 days ago. <laughs> I just like him. I think he's a good basketball player. Embiid is a delight. Yes. Fultz is gonna be so much fun to watch. Roko is awesome. Ro Covington? Is that what we're calling him now? Roko? Rock and Roko, okay. both Bobby Covington, yeah. And then Ben Simmons is is almost like Ben Simmons is my favorite kind of basketball player. Ben Simmons is the guy who sees the past that no one else can see. There's like five guys in the league like that. That's why Jason Kidd was always amazing to watch. Okay, we but we and now this is somebody who I've been rooting against. My son owns his t-shirt. I want him to succeed. He has the same name as my son. I love Ben Simmons. I've made jokes about him for three years. All we have of him so far is this really dispiriting LSU season. And they didn't play at all last year. And we have no idea if he can shoot. I'm not positive what position he is. He's a small forward who's going to run the point. He is the guy. He's going to be absolutely electric he's the in transition. To me, the fear is like he's the Gretchen Mall Vanity Fair cover. Here's the next starlet. Here's the next starlet. It's like, wait, is that? And then, he, and then Ben Simmons is going to be Mall? on Boardwalk Empire 15 yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, and it's you're like, like, I can't believe this. Okay, why did we, we said we thought he was the next guy. Are we sure? I just hope I he's the one I'm worried about the most. I mean, obviously Embiid staying in the court is a problem. Yeah. But Ben Simmons, like, I like him. I th I see it. I see the potential of it. But man, if you're you're asking him to be a point forward, he's never played an NBA game. He's gonna the offense is gonna run through him. I I don't know. I have a lot of question you're marks about like that. You're acting like these guys do. Th everybody does three years at Michigan State and passes some test to get into the NBA. Like he'll be good. He'll be good. I hope all so. these guys were like, he's easily the number one pick. They can't all be wrong. That's the same thing with Fultz. It's like that's how I felt right last up year. until the Fultz trade happened. Everybody was like, Fultz is just he's number one. He's number one. All this Josh Jackson yeah. crap is just BJ Armstrong or whoever making a lot of noise. And then it was like, as soon as Fultz got traded, it was like, well, Fultz got Fultz has bad body language. Fultz has never played a really competitive game. All Didn't the go Celtics to the were like, Fultz is the best. All the Celtics yeah. people, Fultz is the best guy. Yeah, they bring him in for two days. They trade down a week later. Okay, I, I still don't understand what happened. I was ready. I watched all the YouTube <laughs> clips. I had the jersey in the head. I was ready. I was ready for the Fultz era. I, the, the, it's that, just it was, weird. It's nice you say that though. the Sixers have a collection of guys that you want to watch eighty-two times a year. I even like Rashawn Holmes. I yeah. like. Yeah, you probably have seven McConnell guys that I genuinely fun. like. Yeah, McConnell. You have eight guys yeah. I like. Redick. Yeah, fun team. It'll be good. Amir Johnson's vertical. I just the Sixers fans, let us root with you. Don't don't turn it into a you against us. Okay. There's no us. <laughs> There's no us. We all of us want to watch a good basketball team. There's clear question marks, and I hope they pan out for you. I I'm they, I appreciate that. All right, all right. Uh, do you have a, a watch podcast this week? Yeah. Uh, what do you got? Well, we have the watch this week is going to probably be about baby driver for the most part. I still have not seen it. Do I have, do I have to like go out of my way to see it over the next three days? Yeah, is you'd, it enjoy that good? It. you'd enjoy it. It's fun. Uh, okay. it's a lot. It has like, uh, some like point break speed vibes, like nineties action thriller kind of yeah. vibes. Ham's really good in it. Jamie Foxx. It made me sad that when, uh, when Sam Donsky died in that tragic house fire <laughs> that, um, it just would have been a great week for him. It would have. So the thing about Baby Driver that's RIP Donsky, been intense is that it is a movie that is all, has been out for five days and it's already gone through the life cycle of an Oscar movie in terms of it being like <laughs> there's a masterpiece or a complete piece of shit. So I, I'm not even <laughs> the sure. It's the worst. It's but it's but it's actually like I don't even know what I think of Baby Driver anymore. I'm that susceptible to all these swings. It's the Ben Simmons of movies. Yeah, you don't know. You're, you're so many people in your head at this point. I know. The internet's the worst. Doesn't it bother you that that our life is revolve our lives revolve around putting up an yeah, internet but then site there's when the like, internet's also the worst? Then there's like moments like the way people started talking about Sham Sarania over over on Twitter over the weekend, where yeah. it was just like guys changing their their Twitter names to Sham's Goat, <laughs> and just every time any NBA news happened, <laughs> it was just seven hundred memes of Sham's dunking on Woj. That's, that makes it I'm all. I'm glad worth you brought it. that up because I meant to mention that they paid all this money for Woj. They lay off all these people, and he's supposed to get every scoop, and then Sham's his protege. 
got half the scoops. Yeah. He's like, we're, like we're in- ESPN, they're like, I thought we were getting all the scoops. We just paid for all the scoops. Why aren't we getting all the scoops? I would have just, I would have paid prop eight, eight hundred dollars to get a live stream of Shams and like, what's Shams day like? You know what I mean? When Shams is like on a Saturday or on Sunday when or whatever, and he's just got nine phones, he's got thirty five like people on on hold. Would you be on a scale of one to ten? How shocked would you be if it turned out Shams was an automated program, not a human being? <laughs> <laughs> and they pick some, pick some photo, and he yeah, doesn't he's exist. He's Agent Smith. Yeah. He's Woj created some scoop program. Yeah, and then, but yeah, all the data and it, yeah, Yahoo owns. Nothing would surprise me anymore. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks so much to Simply Safe. Getting a good night's sleep easier said than done, especially when you think you just heard a noise downstairs. Rest easy, knowing your home and family are protected with Simply Safe. Arm your home with powerful sensors that actually tell you if a door opens or if a window breaks. Don't spend another night second guessing your home safety. Go to Simply Safe BS. Dot com. Get a special 10% discount with the order today. That is Simply Safe with Two Eyes. Also, thanks to Hotel Tonight, the app that helps you find amazing deals at the last minute for hotels up to seven days in advance. Perfect for a spontaneous getaway or indulging in a little staycation. Download the Hotel Tonight app. Chris Ryan, Hotel Tonight helped you guys. Loved it. Helped you big time with Vegas. The, with Vegas. 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 Hey, man, if you want to go to Summer League last minute, go to Hotel Tonight. They have all the deals there. Thanks so much to... Uh, Miller Lite, thanks so much to SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor. Thanks so much to Nephew Kyle. Go listen to some Bowie, Kyle. Still, still... Start with Hunky Dory, make your way through it. Yeah. Uh, that's it. We're, we're coming back on Friday with one more BS pod. Did anything happen in basketball, by the way, since we we're doing this? No, no. breaking, right? Nobody no. got traded? There's been no updates to our NBA side. Nothing? Nobody did anything? All right, good. All right. We are wrapping this up at 10.53. Uh, West Coast time. So if anything happened, don't blame us. Thanks for listening. Talk to you on Friday on the BS Podcast. Mm-hmm.